Lord. Praise the King of Kings. If you are glad again you are in God's presence, give God thanks this morning from the depth of your heart. He has done everything marvelously and well. It's a day the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we are grateful. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' most precious name, we have prayed. Before we dive again into this message this morning, as our custom is, we want to pray some strategic prayers. God wants to scatter the earth of the wicked, buffeting against our destinies. In Zechariah chapter 8, verse 19, it says, Thus seeth the Lord of hosts. He said, The first of the fourth month, the first of the fifth month, and the first of the seventh, and the first of the tenth shall be unto us the house of Judah, the months of Jerusalem. God have ordained for me and you joy and gladness on every side. But the ounce of the wicked, if you are not enjoying that which God has ordained you despite your righteous living, the ounce of the wicked are responsible. In Zechariah chapter 1, verse from verse 16, it says, Therefore, thou see the Lord. I am ready. To Jerusalem with messes. My house shall be built in it, said the Lord of hosts, and the line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. So then God wants to demarcate the righteous from the wicked. But he says, Cry yet, saying, Thus hears the Lord of hosts. My city's true prosperity shall be spread abroad. And the Lord shall yet comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem. Then I up my eyes and I saw and behold four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, the carrier said, and the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then said I, what come this to do? And the spirit said, these are the ones which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to free them, to put them together, to cast out the ones of the Gentiles, which would lift up their horns over the land of Judah to scatter it. In this context, a horn is a symbol of authority and great power. It can be negative, it can be positive. When the Bible talks about a horn of the righteous, it symbolizes the power of the believer. It symbolizes the believer's authority. Why the horn of wickedness symbolizes the power of the wicked? In those days, the horn is so powerful that when a ram horn or the horn of a unicorn is cut off at that time, it is kept safely. So powerful. So a horn signifies strength. We are we have the horns of the righteous and the horns of the wicked. So any time a man of God is about to be anointed for service in those days, either as a priest or a king, they must take the oil, put it inside the horn and anoint him. That tells us the importance, the significances of the horn. The horn is so powerful that whenever an altar is erected unto the Lord, it is placed at the edge of the altar. The career one from verse 17 to 20 says, true prosperity 
shall my city be spread abroad? The desires of God for you is true prosperity. He wants you to prosper on every side. But the enemies, the also the wicked, are responsible. Any situation that bows down your head is the horns of the wicked. What are some of the attributes of these horns? The horn is designed to scatter. He said, these are the horns which have scattered Judah so that no man did lift up his head. So one of the major attributes of satanic horns is to scatter. No wonder why you are gathering by day, they scatter by night. Why you gather by day, you have an appointment the next day, you will just have a mysterious dream that will cancel it. So on the attribute of the horn, a horn is responsible for conflicts, misunderstanding, disease that defies medical attention. But today, in Psalm 75 verse 10, says all the horns of the wicked also will I cut off. But the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. God wants to cut off the horns of the wicked. Every horns of the wicked scattered while we are gathering. God says the Lord. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off. I decree on this mountain this morning. Every horns of the wicked, wherever it is located, in the witchcraft covenants, in the occultic kingdoms, in the marine kingdoms, in the dark kingdoms, I decree between now the next 30 minutes, let those horns be cut off. From the root, I decree, let those horns be cut off. Say in the name of Jesus, say all of the wicked in my father's house, I signed against my lifting, I cut you off. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm cut off those arms of the wicked. Every arms of the wicked in my father's house, in my mother's house, in my in law's house, in the witchcraft covenants, in the occult kingdoms, in the marine kingdom, that we are signed against our lifting. We decree them cut off right now by the sword of fire. It is written in Psalms 55 and stand. All the arms of the wicked also will I cut off. But the arms of the righteous shall I exalt. We decree those arms right now let be cut off. Every arms of the wicked in our father's house, we cut them down. We cut them down. We cut them down. Lift up your voice this morning. Pray the prayer about the hands of them. The scripture says, to the words of your mouth, you shall be justified. Every arms of the wicked. Who fighting against our lifted, scattered around we are gathered, we decree them cut down, we decree them cut down from their root, we decree them cut down. If somebody pray this morning, lift up a person, we cut them down, we cut them down, we cut them down, we cut them down, we cut them down. Every ounce of the wicked, who fighting against our destinies, we cut them down, we cut them down, we cut them down, we cut them down, we cut them down. Somebody pray tonight, somebody pray this morning, somebody pray this afternoon, wherever you may be, cut those horns down, there is power in your tongue, every of the wicked, in my father's house, in my mother's house, in my healer's house, in my place of birth and activity, in my former residence, in my environment, anywhere, everywhere, every of the wicked, militating against our rising, in the name of Jesus Christ, we we'll cut them down, we we'll cut them off. We cut them off. We cut them down. If somebody pray them, lift up a voice. We cut them down. 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 For in Jesus' mind, they will pray. Say in the name of Jesus, every expectation of the enemy for my life be cancelled. In the name of Jesus Christ, every expectation, the scripture says, What do you imagine against the Lord? For he shall put an utter hand. Every expectation of the wicked over your life, I decree, 
because of them, because of them. If somebody pray this morning, now, lift up your voice. Every expectation of the wicked for my life, for my wife, for my children, for this ministry, everyone partnering with this commission, wherever you may be, on land and on ground, with the grief, let it be cancelled. Let it be cancelled. Every expectation of the wicked over our life by the mixture of the pastor's blood, be cancelled. Be cancelled. Be cancelled. Be cancelled. Be cancelled. Every expectation of the wicked over your life is said by cancelled. He said by counsel, he said by counsel, he said by counsel. It is written in Colossians 2 14, brought in that the arthritis of all that stuff was against us. But the mystery of the personal brother, every expectation of the wicked over your life is said by counsel. Every expectation of the wicked over your life, over my life, is said by counsel. He said by counsel. In the witchcraft covenant, we decree them counsel. In the Coptic kingdom, we decree them counsel. In the marine kingdom, we decree them counsel. Every expectation of the wicked over this commission is said by counsel. 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 For in Jesus' most precious name, we have seen the potency of the heart. He says, and the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then said I, what come this to do? Zechariah chapter 1 from the 16. And he spake saying, these are the homes which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. The reason why you are walking with your head bowed down is because the arms of the wicked is scattered over your gathering. I stand to make a decree this morning. Every ounce of the wicked do fighting against our rising. I pray for you and myself. Every ounce of the wicked in our father's house, every ounce of the wicked in our mother's house, in our hill of sons, in our place of birth and nativity, in our place of environment or former residence. Every also the wicked in the witchcraft covens, in the occultic kingdoms, in the marine kingdoms, in the dark kingdoms, who fighting against our rising, but that the crew that watch us this morning, I decree them cut off. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, say every enemy of my new song, you are a joker. In Psalm 40, verse 3, he said, For he has built a new song in our mouth. He said, For many shall see it, and they shall fear, and they shall trust in the Lord. The reason why that new song is not coming, you are down, she run, break through without entering it, is because the also the wicked is opening the It's a new song. Say, In the name of Jesus, every enemy of my new song. You are a liar. You will not prosper. You will not prosper. Every enemy of the new song of kingdom of the rocket with the group, you will not prosper. You will not prosper. There is power in your tongue. The scripture says you the words of your mouth, you shall be justified. A close mouth is a close destiny. Every enemy of our new song by the decree of heaven, you will not prosper. 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 Every enemy of a new song, but the voice of fire, but the mixture of the possible blood, you will not prosper. You will not prosper. Every enemy of a new song, with the grief, you will not prosper. 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 Every enemy of our new song, by the mystery of the possible blood, by the flesh of fire, you will not prosper. You will not prosper. You will not prosper. You will not prosper. Every enemy of our new song, wherever they may be located, in the witchcraft covenants, in the occult kingdoms, in the marine kingdoms, in the dark kingdoms, you will not prosper. You will not prosper. You will not prosper. Every enemy of our new song, I decree, you will not prosper. You will not prosper. Why you not prosper? For in Jesus, my name, my glory 
and the lifter of the veil. God has already indicated that is our glory and the lifter of our head. God is still in the lifting business, taking the poor out of the dunghill to set them among kings. Shout this loud and clear. Say in the name of Jesus. Say my glory, my glory. and the lift of my head. That means you are asking God because God is your glory and the lift up of my head. Say my glory, my glory. and the lift of my head. Arise. Manifest your power in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh God of my glory. The lift of my head. Arise, manifest yourself, manifest yourself. It is written that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie with the grip of God of love to them. Manifest yourself in this ministry over every word of advice this morning. Lift up your voice in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, manifest them. Oh Lord, manifest them in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, manifest them. Oh Lord, manifest them. My glory and the lift of my head arise, manifest of power in my life. Arise, manifest, 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 arise, manifest. For in Jesus' mighty name, pray. Every life challenge is a faith challenge. Stand ye therefore. Fight ye the good fight of faith. Every challenge in life is a fight of faith. In 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13 says we have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe. Therefore we speak. Faith is a speaking force. Any word that has not moved you has not been found. And no one be one of the Lord that is not yet seen moved with fear. Faith is a speaking force. Until you say you cannot see. Say in the name of Jesus. Say, oh Lord my God, lift up my head in this season. Lift up the head of this ministry. Lift up your voice. Go ahead and pray. Oh God, my lifter. Lift up my head. Lift up my head. The head of my wife. The head of my children. The head of this ministry. Is somebody praying? Oh Lord, my lifter. Lift up my head. Lift up my head. Lift up my head. It is written for you are my glory and the lifter up of my head. Oh God of heaven, my lifter, lift up my head, 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 lift up a voice this morning. Pray the problem of the answer. The scripture says to the eyes, says to the eyes of the Lord is over the righteous. His ears is attentive to the prayers. Is somebody praying this morning? Oh God of lifting up, lift up my head, lift up my head, lift up my head, the head of my wife, my children, the head of every member of this church, everyone listening to me this hour. I decree, oh God and lift up, lift up our head, lift up our head in Jesus' mind. We are praying. Say in the name of Jesus, say every breakthrough I have ever lost to the to the enemies, to the all the wicked. We will stop double. We will stop double. Every breakthrough we have ever lost them to the earth of the wicked. But at the goodness hour, we will stop double. The scripture says, For I will restore the years which the gods have hidden them. We decree, we will stop double. 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 Every breakthrough, every testimony, every lifting, every glory we have ever lost them to the devil, to the earth of the wicked, we will correct them by the anointing of restoration. We will start double. Back to us this morning, we will start double. 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 We 
prayer in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say amen to these prayers. In Joshua chapter 21, verse 4, he said, There fell not of any good things which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. He says, All came to pass. I stand to make a decree on this note. Every prophecy, every prophecy of good things of our life that is yet to be made manifest, I decree before the end of this month, I command the whole to be made manifest. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree by the mercy and grace of God that axe head that is missing. You had a dream where they stole something precious. Your piece of achievement was stolen, was taken forcefully. It's your axe head. And your axe head is your piece of achievement. By the mercy of God, I pray for you and myself. And by the grace of God, let all of our missing access before the end of this day, I decree, let it be recovered. 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 Be recovered. I stand to make a decree this morning by the voice of fire. Every evil manipulation from our foundation contacted with our access, I decree, let it be arrested. Let it be arrested. By the mercy of God this morning, I decree, let our gift and talents, I decree, receive resurrection of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree this morning that the power of God to cross all hurdles, to cross that Red Sea, that Jordan, come upon us this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, all our expectations this week can be made manifest. Thank you, righteous God. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Give God thanks this morning. If any word came true to you, Father, we are grateful, Lord. You have done everything marvelously well. It is by your mercies we are not consumed. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Father, I give thank you this morning. All eyes are on you, Lord. Show yourself strong again. Let every eye see this morning. Let every heart be full of understanding. Let your word run swiftly. Amen. Correct us. Change us. Amen. Intercept, Lord. Amen. Do that usually you can do. Amen. The scripture speaking, oh God, in thee, oh God, in the fountain of life, in the light, oh God, shall we see light. By the light of your word this morning, let every doubt be dissolved. Amen. Let every darkness turn to day. Holy Ghost, you are welcome. As a team this morning, let's go together. Thank you, righteous God. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Jump your big after the people and place the comfortably seated. Year 2022, we have overcome the world. You are welcome once more again into this glorious Sunday service. Happy, happy Father's Day. And I'm very confident that uh, fathers are a special icon in every family. The challenge that we see today in our society is because there was an issue in the home. A father is supposed to be a man that represents God's interest in every home. That is why today we are celebrating our fathers, home and abroad. My prayer is that that which God has ordained for us will be made manifest. Yeah. Our destinies in Christ should not be thwarted. Yeah. I pray for every father believing God for one thing or the other in Christ. This week, it shall be made manifest Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, righteous God.
By the grace of God this morning, we shall be looking at provoking divine restoration. It's our month of mercy. Divine mercy. Mercies always precede favor and restoration. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And when they go, they will not go empty. So an empty life is a symbol of lack of God's favor. We must understand that in the kingdom, we reign by God's word. Every word that has not moved you has not been found. And every word of God we received and runs with, we are empowered to become. In John chapter 16, verse 16, it says the law and the prophets were on to John since that time the kingdom of God is preached and every man pressed into it. So in this kingdom, somebody must be pressing. If you cannot press, you will be oppressed. The man of God said something one day so profound. He said he came into a home and the, the man of God, he was saying the man of God that um, uh, he is hearing so much strange voices. And the man of God replied, because you are too quiet, because somebody must be speaking. That's how it is. In this kingdom, a level of spiritual violence is required to manifest destiny. Restoration is by force. In Joy chapter 25 to 26, he says, and I will restore to you. Restore is not restore is, restore is not something that, uh, that just happened. Restoration means there was an original condition, but something happened. Restoration is kind of a refurbishment. Putting something back into its original state. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the cacaworm, and the caterpillar, and the power, my great army, which I sent among you. So it takes an army in the body to express restoration. And you shall hit in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord the God that I dwelt one rushed with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord of God. And none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Whenever you see shame, you see lack of restoration. So restoration is one of the most potent weapons to wipe away all our shame. You are here, the enemy have beaten you hands down. They have naked you financially. In the spiritual spirit, spirit, realm, they have naked you. But today you shall be restored. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your real identity is about to show up this moment. Your originality will appear this week. Your dignity and honor will come this week. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Psalm 30 from verse 31. No, Psalm 103 from verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Who forgive all thy iniquities. Who heal all thy disease. Who redeem what thy life from destruction. Who granted you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfied their mouth with good things, so that their youth is renewed like a people. God is still in the business of satisfaction. God is still in that business of restoring men back to their original destinies. 
in Proverbs 6 verse 30, it says, Man do not despise a thief. If he steals to satisfy his soul when he's hungry, he said, But if he be found, he shall restore him fold. You see, the reason about one of the most significant things about restoration is that restoration comes with multiplication. He said, when a, when a thief steals to satisfy his own soul, that's fine. But when he is being caught, he shall restore him fold. So one of the good things about restoration that the one thing you lost when God is coming back to restore back and restore back seven, I decree several fold restoration for you. One of the reasons that God wants to restore because God wants us to prosper on every side. What is restoration? It's an action of returning something to its former order. How do I know? The devil has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. What is restoration? The return of a deadly monarchy. You are here, they have taken the crown of your head. It's divine compensation. It is when God divinely turned your captivity around. It is when God decides to lift you up from the dust. That's restoration. It is when God gives you something something that was stolen from you. Restore means to re-establish something to its original condition. So therefore, when something is restored in the scriptures, from what we see, it always grows, it always multiplies, and improved upon. So restoration is necessary in this end time. We shall be restored. Amen. If we look at, for example, in the Bible, the law of Moses, if someone steals a bullock in those days, it was not sufficient to restore the animal he had taken. He had to pay for the equivalent of five bullock or sheep in Exodus 22, verse 1. In the days of Moses, if a sheep is being stolen and that person is being caught, he will pay five times. That is the impotence of restoration. When God restored Job, after the terrible encounter that he had, God gave him double that which he had lost and blessed him more abundantly in his final days. So restoration is needed in this kingdom. Look at it, Job 42, from verse 10. Jesus told his disciples, no, sorry, Mark 10, verse 29. Jesus told his disciples that everyone who left something to follow him would receive 100 times more. God is still in this business of restoring men back to their destinies. God multiplies when he restores and does to restore nowadays. God not only returned to the church the glory that it reached in New Testament times. He wishes to make it more powerful. God wants to make the church so majestic this time around will now become the end of the world. That's how it is. Restoration has a principle in the kingdom. The principle of restoration is the law of God. The Bible says from verse 4 to 5. Then it shall be because he has sinned and is guilty that he shall restore that which he took violently away or the thing which he had disabled gotten or that which was delivered in to keep or the lost thing which he found all, all that about which he had sworn forcefully, he shall even restore it in the principle. So God wants to restore back that destiny that was stolen from you. God wants to put you back in that shape where we need to manifest destiny. Exodus 2 verse 4. He said, if the thief be certainly found in his hands, alive, whether it be ox or axe or sheep, it shall restore double. I decree this week, our week of double restoration. In 2 Samuel 12, verse 6, and it shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Restoration causes multiplication. It has a multiplying effect. 
It does not matter what they stole from you. When God wants to restore you back, He gives you double. Amen. There was one time I had an issue, or my friends rather, had an issue with this car. We are and insurers have to intervene and restore the car double. Even more than the original state because they have to take responsibility of other damages. So restoration is God right now coming in as our insurer, divine insurance. So when God comes restoring us back to our destiny, even those things that were not there at the original time, God put everything together. Look at David. He understood this principle of restoration in Samuel, Samuel, Samuel 9, verse 7. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan's sake, thy father, and I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. That was how Mephoshet, a man that was loaded by a place of forgetfulness, Mercy of God that triggers civil restoration found him, and everything that was taken from him was restored back. Look at Jeroboam. Jeroboam experienced restoration, who had put his arm out against God's prophet. He understood the proof of restoration. First King 13, verse 16. So, first King 13, verse 6. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, He treat now the face of the Lord. That God and pray for me that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again and became as white and became as it was before. It was his, a withered hand became restored. Now, what does it take to be restored? That's the question. Because every promise of God is a condition. In Malachi 3, bring you all the time and offer to my stewards and prove me. So there's always a condition for every restoration. Look at 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. So it takes an own I mean humility. We have to humble ourselves if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. It takes humility of the spirit to see restoration. It's a prerequisite. Matthew 18, Matthew 20, 23, and of God. The purpose of acquiring this attitude is for what? The giving of praise. God expects us to humble. He said, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. So number one is humility. Number two is prayer. We must pray to see that restoration. Of course, you'll be praying and you don't see it because your cloud will not be full. If your cloud is full, the rain will come. We should not from that scripture the frequency for our prayers. The psalmist said, he prayed evening and morning and at noon, Psalm 5, 5, verse 17. Apostle Paul states that we should pray without ceasing. First, the chapter 5, verse 17. Pray without ceasing. We are to pray always, making supplications for all saints. Number one is humility. Number two is prayer. Number three, we have to seek God's face. Having a quiet time. Knowing when to wait upon the Lord. That's how it is. The idea of seeking God's face is to seek and hold yes with God. Is to seek God's favor. We are told to seek God with all our heart and soul. Number four. Turn from your wicked ways. Turn from the wicked ways. If we must be restored back to our original destiny, number one, we must be humble. Number two, we must pray a heartfelt prayers. Number three, we must seek audience with God 
having a quiet time. Number four, we must turn from our wicked ways. It's a requirement. Turning from our sins. Look at David. Turning from his sins. David's attitude. God showed him mercy. So when we as God's children fulfill the full restoration principle, then God will get from heaven. He will forgive our sins and in our land. I decree our land shall be healed this week. We must understand the conclusion when God decides to restore you, no power can stop you. He will begin to trouble your troublers. This week, I decree God will trouble our troublers. In the name of Jesus Christ. That was what happened to Mehiposheth. Because the people was troubled. And he said, Is there no man in the house of Saul? David was troubled. God troubled him. Because kindness is being treated. Something transpired. I pray for you this week. On that matter, you shall be restored. I decree we shall be restored. So we must understand our fellowship with God will always provoke restoration. That's how it is. I decree this week, God will bless us richly. Amen. If you are here, you are not saved. That's the first thing. That's the first thing you cannot say. We must understand that new birth is a requirement. We must seek God's restoration. If you are hearing me right now, all over the globe, you are not saved. You have not given your life to Christ. You have not said, Jesus is Lord. Or you are not saved, but you backslid it. Stay after me this morning. Say, Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Wash me clean from every unrighteousness. Jesus is Lord. I am born again. In Jesus' precious name we pray. For everyone that said that prayer this morning, I decree all born again. The saving grace that brought us into the kingdom again, I decree will preserve us. In this, we will finish gallantly, we will not be found missing. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Give God thanks this morning for the word came through to you. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. You have done everything so badly well. It's by your message we will not consume. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Now begin to speak to your tithe this morning, your offering, your sweet faith. Whatever you are giving to honor what God is doing, speak to your tithe, speak to your offering. Don't just give this morning, give with expectations. Speak to your tithe this morning. The scripture says, everyone as he has proposed this answer, so let him give not of grudgery, of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. So your giving must be cheerful for it to amount to testimonies and results. And you have, you have been giving, you have not yet seen results because your color may be full. And if you are giving, you keep murmuring, you will start again all, all over for the process. But thou will not become our experience. Yeah. Now take it off your up as a prayer. Father, we thank you for the grace to give this morning for every time that our heavens are open, yeah. the devourers should be put for our sake. For every giver, I decree the for national love. I declare our offering blessed in Jesus' precious name of prayer. Now cast your offering down your seat face this morning. The way you are giving to honor what God is doing this morning. My hands are blessed. My hands are blessed. With the blessings of the Lord. With the blessings of the Lord. Oh, our hands are blessed. Our hands are blessed. With the blessings of the Lord. With the blessings of the Lord. And a delight of surely must be blessed. Anything I hold surely must be blessed. My hands are free. With the blessings of the Lord. With the blessings of the Lord. Oh, my hands are blessed. My hands are blessed. With the blessings of the Lord. Oh, my hands are blessed. My hands are blessed. With the blessings of the Lord. With the blessings of the 
Let's give God thanks this morning for all he has done as we close. Father, we are grateful for all the talk. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Time to keep for the reign of the world. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. But I, I decree this morning as we go, let your presence go before us. This week, oh God, we will not regret. This week we decree blessed. In this come and day for occurrence. I decree this week our week of restoration. We will not suffer demotion. We cover this week with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Surely shall follow us in the end of our life. We shall tell the earth to the God forever, ever. Amen. Go in peace this morning. Return back with your testimonies. Be blessed. Amen.